Oh, it's the fish delivery guy. Oh, wait, this is my linen closet. Okay, never mind. Oh, but we have a giant box of fish here from Aquatic Arts. Now, some people have commented that I always unbox things, and everyone seems to say, Alex, your normal uh, knife for opening things, which is really just my foraging knife for collecting mushrooms and uh, bushcraft, uh, they say, oh man, Alex, what's with the giant knife? You know, that's not a knife. This is a knife. So, let's open it with this silly, ridiculous, uh, barbecue machete, whatever it is. I don't, I don't even know why we have it. But, Aquatic Arts, massive unboxing for pond season, for tubbing. I'm so excited. This is the big order. Ta-da! By Ginsu. Actually, I have no idea what brand this is, but... Aquatic Arts, you can find uh, a link to their discounted items. They rotate what's on sale all the time. But you can find a link to anything you see here, and it's constantly changing, uh, in the description below uh, in, in the doobly-doo. So, let's take a look and see what we can see. Let's, let's, maybe we should set this up. We'll do this in the kitchen this time. Last time we were in the living room. Oh, ceiling. Hello, ceiling. But I like to show, you know, unedited what you get when you order from them. Because really, they're all about quality. And, uh, you know, that's that. So here we have a marsh killifish that is in uh, some kind of swampy water. And uh, this will be interesting. I have never kept a marsh killifish. Don't know a ton about them, but they're really um, kind of cool looking. They're speckled. They, they're silver and speckled, and uh, they're just kind of a neat little fish. But they got these, I think, at the Killifish Carnival. Um, their company was there, and they did some trades. So uh, there you go. You can see it. And it's in, like, kind of a – looks like bog water almost. So – I, I'll have to check what the pH and everything is on this. It might be a bit acidic. So definitely want to check that out before I place it in its proper home. Holy cow, they have sent a lot. So uh, thank you, Aquatic Arts, uh, for this. Here we've got seven fire red, uh, or seven red face, sorry, uh, reading wrong. Seven red face top minnows. Now, these are a native and uh, really, really pretty. I can see the red in them already. Um, the fins have this beautiful peach orange red color. Um, obviously, everyone's stressed from shipping, but they're going to be really lovely in an outdoor uh, tank uh, for the tubs. And uh, looks like we lost one. Looks like we lost one. Not not the end of the world, but we'll want to get them out of the, the bag for the ammonia to be uh, out of the way. But uh, that can be somewhat of a problem. Then, because of my new breeding project, we've got some scarlet battis. And uh, it looks like we've got three females, three young females. So um, there they are, the three young females which I'm really excited about. It's hard to get females, and they know that I'm working on this breeding project and that I'm, I've am i hybridized the, uh, the Malaysian uh, red and black tiger baddis or the uh, Myanmar baddis, and uh, I've then hybridized that with the scarlet um, with the scarlet gem or red scarlet uh, baddis, and it looks really cool, the hybrid. Also, new food, which they I don't think they've officially even launched. So I'll be trying this out, giving them feedback and uh, all that. But pollen uh, granules, which is awesome news. More shrimp food. And then we've got African banded uh, barbs. I love these guys. These color up a beautiful copper color. Um, you can see them here. But they've got nine bands on their side. They're real feisty. These ones are real, uh, I can feel, I mean, they're, they're just kicking against the side of the, the bag like crazy. Um, 
Also, I got half beaks, so I'm excited about this. Um, we're hoping for females. Looks like a female and maybe maybe two females, it looks like. Full-grown half beaks. These are the golden wrestling half beaks. And uh, their jaws and uh, everything are in good shape, which is great. Oftentimes, half beaks kind of bash themselves on stuff. So that's exciting. They'll go to the uh, half beak colony that's already in existence and uh we've next we've got oh danger noodles we've got coolie loaches uh we got four coolie loaches love coolie loaches they're just fun my wife hates them but i think that they're just rad feeding them blood worms at night nothing makes me happier so those are a fun one too and i'm excited to have holy cow look at all this 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 has got to be bigger than the last unboxing so thank you, uh, viewers, for helping in that uh, the commissions and things that I make, I can then <laughs> use on uh, ridiculous amounts of fish uh, for the fish room, and then I can bring you more species and things to share with you guys. But here is the next food, which is snowflake, so another uh, shrimp food. And um, these ones uh, I'm excited about also because I know a few different companies do this kind of thing. But this is uh, essential amino acids, vitamins, minerals, fiber, and uh, digestive health health um, additives uh, for crabs, snails, crayfish, etc. It is what you know what would basically be at the bottom of the uh, lake or a river and full of nutrients. So. What do we have next? Oh, yeah. We've got four. Oh, four. Wow, I thought they only had three to sell. But four red cap. Um, uh, these are the Madaka rice fish, the Japanese rice fish. And there's four of the red caps. Now, these ones aren't super red cappy, but um, you can see they've got kind of a peach cap more. They may color up more. But these are really fun fish for outside tubs. Let's see. Can you see the peach color at all? Kind of kind of shows up in there. Um, there'll be another outside fish. So we got lots of outside fish stuff. And holy cow, there are a lot of bags here. Then look at these. I'm excited about these. These are the glass bloodfin tetras. I want to be doing a video in the near future for y'all on fish that are translucent. And uh, what that biology is all about. And how it happens evolutionarily, and uh, what the uses are for that. But these are just a cool fish. These are uh, very dynamic looking. They're kind of kind of mean looking, but they're not mean. Uh, and they're just a really pretty fish when they color up too. They've got some iridescence plus that big bright tail. Just epic. Um, next, we've got... This one I ordered and was really excited that they had, which is the Annie's Gobi. Uh, I believe it was named after the wife of the man who uh, discovered these. And uh, they are another Stiphodon species, and they're smaller Stiphodon. Real delicate with bigger paddle-like tails. And they have basically like pastel rainbow colors to them. So I'm really excited uh, to have these. And uh, they're very peaceful. Graze on biofilm. And you know I have about eight Stiphodon species already um, in one, one of the fish rooms. And then two more in the community tank. Um, next we have the uh, Platinum Double Red. Um, I think this is a Cockatoides. Uh, or is it an Agazizei? Um, well, I, Cockatoides, it appears. Uh, uh, a pisto. And this is the male, right on. So we'll, we'll be breeding more apistos. I know you guys uh, may be aware I already have a few apistos, but uh, you can never have enough apistos. That's the rule in, in my house. And then we've got these sparkling blue Madaka rice fish. These are. Um, Hopefully these color up, uh, you know, brightly blue. I don't know how blue they are. I mean, but these are sparkling, like they've got the gene that's like opal color. And these can withstand being frozen. I mean, they're really hardy fish. Uh, be, they can live under the ice and so forth. So we'll have to put them out in a tub and get them all established with the other, uh, with the red caps. We'll put them separate, but of course, um, 
both out there. Then we've got the uh, Platinum Double Red Female, and she's right here. So she's kind of got the Platinum White Body, and then the, the Double Red means that two of her fins have uh, red pigmentation on them. So we'll have to get more shots of everyone colored up later. Boom, a tub of Red Root Floaters. Gonna love having these both for my aquascape again for the immersed part of things and for uh, outside in the pond. I just love Red Root Floaters and if you can get enough light on them, they're just incredibly beautiful. Um, also, the Miyuki uh, Madaka Rice Fish. These are the other true blue as they're often called. Um, really pretty. These ones definitely have an iridescent blue or a ghostly white to them. They're just a really cool rice fish. Um, again, same species, just a different strain. So that'll give me five strains of rice fish. So really exciting stuff for tubbing. This is going to be the biggest year yet, especially since I have my own house, which is just great. Um, and then we've got a fancy placat betta female. And I had requested some just, uh, I said, just give me whatever, any ugly old female uh, <laughs> bettas. And uh, if you want to send me a male too, that's fine. But I have some males. But they sent me this fancy placat male that's actually really pretty. It's turquoise and green. And then it's got um, a red and orange face, like white, red, and orange face. But just, that's actually a really pretty fish. Um, right on. So exciting. Um, thank you so much, uh, Aquatic Arts. You guys rock. And then we have the weirdos, in walks weirdo, uh, the banjo catfish. Such named for the shape. But these are a fun little catfish. Uh, pretty peaceful. They, uh, they, of course, being a catfish, they do have some uh, spines. Uh, on the fins, but they're uh, just an interesting, quirky catfish, uh, vegetarian mostly, but as as catfish go, they will eat pretty much anything that fits in their mouth if it passes by, but in my aquariums, other than scuds and some seed shrimps, that means they're essentially vegetarian. All right, you can see we still have more fish. This is just crazy. I, I mean, wow. We've got 10 ember tetras, very young, uh, not colorful right now, um, that's for sure. But these will color up really well. I've had uh, ember tetras from them several times over the last five years, and uh, they always come in uh, a, a little bit smaller. Um, I guess, I mean, they're average size for a pet store you'd find them this size too uh but the color will come back very quickly it'll come back in short order and then as they get older it'll also um start to get more and more noticeable okay so then we also have dun dun dun, dun we have some more lizard whiptail cats these are the red lizard uh cats and I had these, uh, obviously I still have one, but two of them didn't do so well. Uh, I don't know what happened exactly. They kind of just wasted away um, in the tank uh, over the course of a few months. So we're going to give it another go. Um, they're all treated for, you know, any sort of parasite. But a lot of times with, uh, with catfish, they are uh, susceptible to stomach bugs, especially if they're wild caught or anything. But aquatic arts usually tries to catch things uh, and 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 uh, and spawn them in house uh, or not in house, but uh, in the Midwest with various breeders. So then this is another really special one, uh, live bear, and these are the high fin platies, and these are not colored up, believe it or not. They have a beautiful greenish blue tinge that comes up into the fin and then like red and almost like a purple. Like they're almost like a full rainbow spectrum on these fish. And again, another just great live bear. Um, and they're just a high, high quality line. So super excited to get those, spawn those. They could be tub fish outside too. And last but not least, we've got the black and green riffle gobies, very similar to the Palawan riffle gobies, but these ones have more green on them and uh, a bit 
a bit um, a bit more of uh, kind of spangling, if you can see this, on their finage. More spots and kind of zigzag batik patterns. Kind of like the batik loach, actually. Um, but a really fun little goby. And again, you need the biofilm in a mature tank. But they're just a great little thing uh, for your aquarium for a nano tank. And uh, caught out in the wild and... Uh, as far as I know, nobody is breeding them in captivity. So they're kind of a special treat that comes in uh, wild caught. So, wow, what a haul we have here. I mean, incredible. We've got a lot of stuff. We've got uh, the cichlids for the breeding. Hopefully soon we'll teach you guys about better breeding. We've got some community fish with the, uh, with the tetras, the glass blood fin tetras. These guys, let's just take these these and the ember tetras. Let's get them right over to their home. And uh, we've got a few community tanks where they could roam, but this is where they are going. And uh, let's see how they look under just light that's different than the other room. Look at that. They're going crazy. They're happy. They're home. And then, uh, oh, I brought the rice fish over here. But actually, you can see a lot more of the sparkling in them. Well, it's hard to see on camera, but it's like a silver blue sparkle. So I'm really excited about them. We'll get them, uh, they don't need to be up to temperature, so I'm not going to acclimate them uh, per se. But the nice thing about rice fish is they can literally live in a non-aerated fish bowl, like in the stereotypical old school fish bowl and that makes them happy i mean they're totally chill with that so um we'll have to get also the uh are these the embers yes 10 ember tetras so let me show you the other ones are um from aquatic arts originally too and let me just show you how they'll color up so yes i know they're not quite the sight to behold yet but look at how good they will color up uh, if you feed them and keep them in clean water and, uh, you know, make their lunch every day and uh, give them little fish massages. And no, it's not that hard. They're pretty easy fish to take care of, but they're they're just a fun one. And they're one that I, I wanted to see more of more schooling, more movement. And same with the blood fins. Uh, definitely excited to see these guys moving around in a group now we are getting a little heavy on fish in this tank for the speed of the plants that are in here but it's just going to mean that instead of every two weeks we're going to need to do a water change every week and uh, we may also take out the two plecos the lemon uh the lemon plecos uh, the baby lemon plecos are already over here and uh yeah, so that, that's just the case. We might have to move them into the other room, into the 40 breeder. So really exciting stuff. We've got that, and then I guess I can separate out what's going inside, what's going outside. So siphodons going inside. Uh, the placot betta. Man, that is, that is a nice betta. I just told them to send me any old extra betta, but boy, that's a pretty one. A pretty boy. I've got a yellow and red uh, female too so he's my only male out of three females then the platies the sunset platies um or sun sun kissed platies annie's goby these are actually stifodon annie is their latin name and uh so those will all be indoor and then we've got the miyuku rice fish madakas they're named after different regions, different um, provinces and things where they are traditionally raised. The lizard catfish, they'll stay indoors. Half beaks, they'll go in the mormorid tank and be up on the top water. They hang out just on the top water, which um, is fine by me. But again, Aquatic Arts, 15% discount in the code below. It changes what the code actually is. will change depending on the month and... Um, just how things are going with the company. And so just check in on my most recent video. And whatever my current video is, I'll always have a link in the description to that. Now the Marsh Killy, I guess, and actually these red-faced top minnows, they're going to go outside as well. So we're actually going to acclimate them outside so we can leave them down. The Platinum uh, Double Red, um, they're, they have their own tank that just got set up, ready for them now that they're here. 
So we'll put them in there. They might have a dither of uh, of some of the um, siphonons. That's actually worked okay, but I'm, I'm not positive that I want to do that. So these barbs may be their, their, um, their dither instead, just out of an abundance of caution. Cooley loaches also work fine um, as kind of like a cleanup crew and night club crew, but they're going to be in there. The banjo catfish, they'll definitely go in the Venezuelan 40 breeder, and they'll probably disappear for a few weeks, but then they'll be back. Or they could go in the Mormorid tank and be with all the other oddball catfish. And then we've got the red cap rice fish and the various madacas, the marsh killifish and the red faced minnows. And then the Scarlet Baddus. Now these could go outside too, but I have breeding tanks that I'm already working with currently. So wow, what a freaking haul. I mean, just insane uh, from Aquatic Arts. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, viewers, for making this possible. And uh, don't tell my wife. Uh, she doesn't need to know what I spend on fish and taking care of fish. But hopefully we can get uh, either species spotlights or live streams where we talk about every single one of these things. And if you have any questions, comments, or ones you want to see first and foremost, because it'll trickle out that information over the next few weeks and months, um, just let me know in the comments. Or if you have experience with them that, that's uh, good or bad or indifferent, just let me know how these fish worked out for you. I'd love to hear it. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I super excited about this so i'm gonna get these fish settled and uh we'll let you know how they're doing later on so uh take care guys and be sure to check out the links below <laughs> talk to you later bye